Hey Mech Warriors, welcome to Bad Ben's Battle Mechs, I'm Bad Ben, and today I thought I would show you uh, how I build this bunker thing. Uh, now I don't have this, uh, another one of these to put in the top, and I also don't have uh, more of the little guys, but just the basic structure of the thing and painting it up, I think we can do that. So. What this comes from is, what this thing comes from, is originally this. This is uh, <clears throat> from a physiotherapist who, you know, I, I got this and it's to like, it's a back massaging thing. It's made out of foam. You can see a bunch of things pressed together. It's tighter and more stable than like a packing insert. And it cuts easier too, but it's always good to have a sharp knife. Now this is pretty easy. I'm just gonna measure five centimeters from the bottom and make a slice here. And I'm gonna go over here and do the same thing. centimeters and keep going around a bunch of guiding slices It's hard to see them, well, it's a little difficult, the slices are very thin, but I think I'm all the way around, and I can just continue to find this slice, that slice, just kind of connect them you probably definitely can't see the slices on the camera because they're super small but I can and then once you've gotten all the way around I like to just Keep going around. Doing really shallow cuts. And once you're all the way around, your knife will just follow the slot you've cut, hopefully. doesn't have to be perfect. My other ones aren't perfect and you can't really see it. I'm almost through, but still taking my time. Not getting impatient. Shallow slices are the way to go. There! And you get actually a pretty, it's hard to see, but top is pretty smooth. <clears throat> now, gotta cut this in half. This one, I don't really know. One and a half centimeters. Or, cut off the bottom, which is a 
about two centimeters. I think I was trying to make it two centimeters. I made it a little more than two centimeters. But it really doesn't make that big of a difference. And then I'm just gonna go and do the exact same thing. Or do a, actually, it really doesn't matter, but I'm going to do 1.5 centimeters from the top. That's what the other one was. Slice there. guiding slices at about, I'm actually doing 1.6 centimeters, not 1.5. It's not that important. I've gone all the way around now. And there I have two pieces. <clears throat> now, I've got to work on this part. So I've got to find the center point, and I know there's easier ways of doing this. Mm -hmm. Gotta find its widest point. 8.8. .8. So at about 4.4, there approximately, just make an indent. I'm going to do that in another place. See that I totally wrong my first indent. Similarly there, yeah. And then I'm just gonna cut this thing, and I'm eyeballing this a lot. I made the center mark, but it's just to help me eyeball it a little bit. Cut straight down. About how much? 
one and a half centimeters approximately. So. More than that. And it doesn't matter if you go a little too deep on this either. I'm going to eyeball it a little bit too. Not going all the way around this time. Just until we hit that. Halfway mark. About there. Slice, where is it? Deep am I? Much there. Ha! And I have that shape. This goes on top like that, and I have another bunker, just like that. That'll be, this hollow part will be the bottom, I suppose. Do -do -do. Mm. It's not exactly the same as the other one. I'd say the other one, the bottom is thicker and the top is thinner. But I really don't care. It looks fine to me. Now, toothpicks and wood glue. of glue. Some toothpicks out. Don't need a lot of them. And then just try to line that up as best you can. And squish it down. Stick some toothpicks in it. Ugh. Squish it down. 
squeeze it until that glue comes out. Off the excess. And let it dry. Also, just get those toothpicks in as far as possible and snip them off. And there we have base finished. Start painting it. So here I have my Fliesen fix. I don't know what you'd call this in English. It's just for filling holes in your tire will grow out. It's essentially acrylic paint with a bunch of junk in it. And I'm just going to squeeze out what I have left. To here, I need to go pick up some more anyway. That's probably uh, more than I need to. And really not very much water, a few drips, thins it down really quickly. Big fat cheap brush and glob it on. bit of a line where the two parts meet but it covers you can cover that this stuff really easily and this will need a couple of minutes. save what I have Shaking the camera, getting the inside too. Everywhere. And I just try to like, and then squeeze it a little bit. Actually, you don't want to squeeze it, you want to fill that gap with this stuff. And I didn't let that PVC dry, glue dry at all. I uh, simply started painting immediately. It can all dry together. And this stuff will take a good many hours to dry. I don't know how many exactly. But it's not 10 minutes. All right, so that's the first coat done. Got to save this, got to find a cover for it. Put something on top so it doesn't all dry out immediately. Uh, yeah. So it's been a good two hours. I had um, window open. And a good breeze coming through. It's a sunny day. So this dried fairly quickly. And all I'm going to do is put on a second coat. Try to smooth it out as much as possible. Watch out for the drips. And that line is still really visible. Second coat, it should cover that up fairly well.
Okay. Make sure to cover up any fingerprints that I've left. And if it doesn't look 100%, you can either touch it up again later, but we'll also do weathering. Whoops. Put that on there. Save the rest of it. And the weathering will, you know, cover up any spots we've missed, but I don't think I've missed anything. Just got to make sure it doesn't drip too much and if it forms those drips. It really shows. And when this stuff hardens, it is very hard. So. Second coat done. So my second coat has dried. I actually put it out in the sun and it like dried like nothing. It was super quick. And um, the lines for the most part invisible. It'll even be more invisible after some weathering. Uh, and I did, I, I just touched it up a few places here and there as it was drying. Uh, you know, just to make sure it was all covered. And now comes the next step, which is Mod Podge. Matt. Mod Podge. And this just seals the whole thing. It is matte, but it's shinier than the concrete. Well, not concrete, but yeah, the tile grout stuff. <sighs> Just a little bit. Just a little shiny, which is fine. And we'll put some weathering on top. And Just go crazy with the Mod Podge. Getting everywhere. Well, you don't want... You don't want gloops and clumps. Or drips. And... But yeah. It's pretty easy. Just slather the stuff on. Everywhere. Watch out when you're using cheap... Brushes. Like I am that when the hairs come out, you get them. Don't use cheap, such cheap brushes that the hairs are always coming out. Um, or, you know, get all the hairs that fall out. So, yeah, that is a really easy step. And if I put that out in the sun, it will be finished within less than an hour. Ah, more hairs. Got to throw that paintbrush in the garbage. At some point, they're just no good anymore. All right. I got most of the hair. So the Mod Podge is all dried. Now it's time for some weathering. So I'm going to start with green, kind of a dirty green, and I'm going to make that using maize yellow from the Army Painter. And a little bit of this contrast 
Black Legion. Just a little dab. And it turns it all into a dirty rose green. Add some water. Don't need to water it down too much. I might need a little more black. Oh, that's pretty good. Then just slap it on the top. So, and then streak it down the sides on all the edges. And then I usually kind of dab it a little bit, get rid of the obvious drips and it's dirty weathering so it doesn't have to look all proper and nice and neat in fact it should look weathered and dirty and that's all you want to do dirty weathering I don't know if you can see it well in that light. It's mostly green. And I'll just give that a little while to dry and then come back and do a black wash. And then it'll be pretty much finished. <sighs> Is that green enough? I need more green. I water it down too much. I always do just a little more yellow. Citadel. Contrast Black Legion. A little tiny bit. And I'm not even going to add any more water. There. Dirtier, darker green. Give that a few minutes to dry. So well, that's all dried. Now I'm just gonna take some contrast black. Just a bit of water. Put it all over this thing. Streaking down the sides.
Super easy. Then I usually take a towel and wipe a lot of it off and just kind of dab some around. Just to dirty up the whole thing. Nice and dirty and messy. And <clears throat> that black will actually lighten up a little bit as it dries. But I think it looks alright. Doesn't look exactly the same as the other one, it looks a little dirtier. That's alright. And then you can just go and get some 3D printed cool stuff and glue it to the top. This one comes in two parts, it's got the base. So I just cut that hole out. And you might, actually I wouldn't do that before I painted the whole thing because then you'd get paint all over this. It's easy enough to cut it out and you can put some dudes inside maybe who are shooting out see them a bit. just for a little extra detail and then you got yourself a bunker and you can play some battle tech with it yeah. there's an atlas just behind so it's about two levels this summoner fits behind, jump on top, whatever you want, put it on part of a bigger base uh, like I did. Uh, but yeah, that's basically how I made my little bunker things. Really happy with them. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you next time. Show off some more of the little Things. I think I'll do something on the pipes and the industrial stuff, show that stuff off a little more, how I did that. Anyways, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.